Hello everyone, Pepe Merola here. Just give me a couple seconds, I need to set up my headphones and let me know if you can hear my voice okay. I think you guys can hear me well, but um, I'm gonna check this out on my phone since um, my computer's far away, as you guys know. Um, so just give me a couple minutes. Actually, if you can, get your drumsticks and practice pad. If you don't have a practice pad, Get ProLogic. ProLogic practice pad. Very good. So just give me one second. Please say hello. Let me know where you're from, where you're watching from. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. I would love to meet all of you guys. I would love to meet all of you and uh, uh, help if I can. Okay? Just give me a second. First of all, let me make sure that you guys can hear me okay. I'm gonna check that on my phone. Let's see. Today we're gonna to be talking about snare drum technique, grooves, at time signature, you know, and uh, push and pull, molder technique, any questions, please let me know. Let's see. Yeah, I guess so. Yes. Yeah, I guess you guys can hear me well. There you go. I see Jeffrey is watching. Hello, Jeffrey. Jeffrey is watching. And always nice to see you, Jeffrey. Now. See a lot of people getting connected right now. So I'm gonna wait a little little more and then start with the lesson. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Let me know, I can read the question here. And if you're watching from uh, those, you know, um, uh, group, drum groups, uh, um, you know, you can write a comment over there, ask me a question there, but I will not be able to uh, see the comment in real time. But if you want an, an, uh, you know, in, uh, a, an answer right away, immediate answer, get on my page right now, Pepe Marola, just click, it's open, uh, or my Facebook uh, fan page, and ask the question directly below this video, because it's live. Also, if you are on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, we need more people, and um, enjoy the lesson. Any question, please. Reach out to me, I'll be more than happy to meet all of you guys and help if I can. So let's see what the topic is about today. Today, more drum tips with Pepe Marola, at time signature, grooves, then drum technique, including molar, push and pull. Uh, okay, good. So let's start with grooves, okay? I'm going to... Um, To set my headphones right here, which is great. Just give me. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay. So, as anything, as anything to me, uh, it, you know, practicing. Um, Groups, patterns, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> you can pick up 
you know, any books that has all those patterns that you can work on. In this case, I'm going to start with something very simple because I don't know who's watching and I don't know your level right now, but I'm going to do something, you know, from the very, uh, from beginners to advanced and show you, in a way, the way I practice to develop a good, you know, groove and, you know, to make it sound good when we play in the band. Because the most important thing is to, um, as we all know, is to, uh, to have a nice and solid groove, especially when you work in a band. If you play in a band, if there is no groove, you're out of the picture, you're out of business. <laughs> so, um, there's this book, I, I have a lot of students that they, we go through this one, uh, it's called uh, The Unique Rock Drumming Method by Carmine Apice, Carmine Apice, uh, The Realistic Rock, which uh, it starts with very simple, very simple pattern. And, you know, um, and I kind of like it really, I really do. So, let's see. Let's see. The way I would practice any groove, you know, is just the same way I use the same technique of practicing, you know, my snare drum technique. Same way. We start slow, right? Double stroke roll, single, paradiddle. Double paradiddle, and so on and so forth. We start slow, and then we, you know, uh, uh, and then we increase the tempo slowly. You know, once we get better and better, it takes time, as you guys know. So, but here it is: how to develop a nice, nice groove. So, uh, with this realistic rock. I was talking about this book by Carmine Apice. Um, I'm going to start with playing like eight notes on the Hyatt, okay? I'm going to start from the very basic, you know, thing here, playing eight notes. Now, in the modern music nowadays, I'm, I got to say this because this is important, what's happening nowadays in music you know, we, I hear a lot of sounds on the Hyatt that they also sound like just playing the tip like this. It's a part of the modern music, modern sound, to search different sounds. Okay, so that's more what's happening in the music today, but so the reason why I said this, I'm saying this, is because I want you guys to know that if you play eight notes on a Hyatt and you practice, you know, a simple groove, which is this, quarter notes on the bass on the first and the third, it's two and four on the snare drum, Okay, so first of all, I would suggest to practice anything, any of those patterns in this book, slow and at least for five to 10 minutes each. The reason for that is because, you know, if you, if you listen to a ballad or a song, a pop song or whatever, you know, we gotta be able, as a drummers, we gotta be able to play that groove at least for five minutes. Four minutes, five minutes. See, some of the best hits, three minutes and 45 seconds, four minutes of gray groove. That's all it takes.
So that's one of the reasons why I, I will practice, my, me personally, myself personally, I will practice each of those groups at least for 10 minutes each, okay? In a simple way, because playing them simple, simple, as simple as, simple as we can, because simplicity sometimes, simple things can become even more difficult than play difficult things. I don't know if I make sense. You guys dig? So, again, now the reason why I say to practice slow, those eight notes. If, as you can see, the motion of my right hand is this. So, we don't, I don't, I'm not playing everything with the tip of the stick which is Los Gabos, Los Gabos Drumsticks. Great company, great sticks from uh, Canada. Check them out, love it. I use Los Gabos uh, 5A Red Ikery. I really, I really dig them. So, so here it is. As you can see, the motion of my wrist is doing this. I'm not playing everything with the tip. If you want a different sound, that you know, a sound that really in the modern music, maybe more hip hop music, you know, requires this type of thing, sometimes you can do that. But you have to know that this motion, it's very important. Playing the eight notes, you play with the inside of the stick, and on the way up, you play the tip. Land, land, tip. And this looks like, you know, it looks like easy, you know, but, you know, it's very important that we uh, work and practice, you know, on details, all those groups. A lot of people, they underestimate practicing groups, which is very important, believe it or not. Now, here it is. Okay. So I would suggest to practice those groove nice and slow in all different tempo. So I'm going to do go a little you know, slower, I'm gonna, you know, slow down even more. One and two and three and four and four. As you can see the motion still, See, it's already grooving. This will help you to groove even more, you know. Then increase the tempo a little more. Practice it like in all different tempos, you know? I know this looks like boring, but it's not, guys. A little faster. Okay, so once you get familiar with, once you get familiar with those patterns, which again, those are very basic, very easy, but easy, simple things, as I said before, can become very difficult to play, especially if you go, you know, if you get in a recording studio with a musician making, you know, for a recording session, and you gotta play for five minutes, supporting the band, play tasty, with a lot of taste, and 
feel and groove. It's not that easy, okay? So once you practice those grooves at least for 10 minutes each every day, you know, then you can start applying uh, uh, the hi-hat variations, for example. I also like to play not only, you know, eight notes. And again, I'm using those, this pattern as an example. Quarter notes on one, on first and third beat, snare drum on second and fourth, okay? I want to talk about the variation of the Hyatt's first, and then you guys can move on to any other difficult, you know, more difficult, more advanced, more articulated, you know, groups. <laughs> So on and so forth. So, but let's go back again. And, you know, I would suggest, I like to practice also using different variations on the Hyatt. Yes, the name of the book, um, hello, your name is Sam. Hi, Sam. Sam Barcelona. The name of the book is Realistic Rock by Carmine Apice, Carmine Apice. Okay, I might write it in the comments, hold on. Realistic Rock by Carmine Apice. There you go, it's in the comment now. What are you watching from? Sam, what are you watching from? So now, like I said, I also like to play different variations on the Hyatt. So, <coughs> I would play, I would like to also, I would play also 16th notes. You're welcome. So now, as you, as you can see, the motion of the, of the Hyatt here, I'm not playing the 60 notes with no accents, which you can, by the way. You know, I'm still playing and using this motion. I like to play an accent on the, on the first. And also on the eighth note. You guys can hear the difference between this and what a difference makes the Hyatt variation and the groove, the way we play it. Like, variation one. Variation two. Okay, so 
to me, this is also a nice way to develop, you know, a nice groove and feel comfortable, you know, when we play in the band, you play a groove. So a lot of people out there that they play, they have a great technique, great hands, but when it comes down to groove, it's all like, you know, to sit down and... So on and so forth. So, um, oh, you're watching from Philippines. That's wonderful. That's great. I love, I love the the Philippines. Now, here it is. Here it is. The sixteen notes. First variation, playing an accent, accent on every 16th, every quarter note on the very first 16th. I like that too. And also playing an accent on, uh, you know, on the first and the third, which at this point, will accentuate, recalls the eight notes. Okay? And so on and so forth. So, and it's very important to practice Again, very slow. And it's in all different tempos. You start slow. I'm just mixing different, you know, groups. Okay? But again, I would suggest you guys to practice each one of them individually for five to 10 minutes every time. Another thing, after the 16 notes, I would also like to uh, get involved, if needed, which I think this is a great way to uh, develop also a good independence. Um, but maybe there is a, a book that I really love, you know, um, it's called um, The New Breed by uh, Gary Chester. Uh, there's a 39 system to execute this book, and it's all based on groups. You know, uh, the melody is, is, is played with the bass drum, okay? And there's the application of 16th between the right hand and left hand, two and four on the snare drum, between red cymbals, hi-hat, different hi-hat variation, and, you know, two and four. And the bass drum reads the melody. and so on and so forth. Um, but again, let me go back, let me keep going. Uh, uh, let's see here. Vicky Gretsch, watching from uh, Tasmania, Samba Groove, please. Uh, Tasmania, what is Tasmania? Um, let's see. Hello, Vicky. So, Again, now, 
I also like the idea to, uh, instead of playing the, 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 the groove, the Hyatt groove on the Hyatt, to play it on the red symbol, Australia. Australia is beautiful. Sydney is beautiful. Sydney is a beautiful city. I see a lot of people watching from Australia and meeting a lot of people from Australia. My friend John Perry lives in Australia. Uh, he's also a drummer. So, but anyway, here, here, here I am. So instead of playing the eight notes on the Hyatt, okay, I will play it on the right cymbal, starting with a simple beat, sim simple, very simple beat, eight notes. Okay? And I will start, you know, I will start playing the quarter notes every beat on the Hyatt. That's the basic to start with. Okay, then the next step would be in Hyatt offbeat. Eight notes offbeat. Okay, I was just like playing some variation with the bass drum, but again, you just read the, the, the each and each you know each grooves of this book or any book out there. Okay. And execute in that way. And again, for five minutes each. And you guys will see, you guys are gonna fall in love with the idea to, you know, to play the Hyatt eight notes of beat. You know, maybe you can add the variation like two sixteenth and the eight notes on the red cymbals instead of playing eight notes. You can play two sixteen and the eight notes. And then you can play an eight notes off beat on the hi hat, and then and then play the groove. You can also play eight notes to 16. Instead of going like to 16 and eight notes, which is this. Four, one, two, three, four. And then you can play in eight notes and two 16. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do it slower for you. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, there's so many, so many ways to approach, you know, uh, those groups. Now, I think I'm going to move on, guys, and um, otherwise this is going to be a, a too long of a uh, lesson. <laughs> so but I just wanted to give you some ideas of how, oh no, of, oh, you know, on how to practice, on how to practice groups. And again, if you have any question, let me know. Please uh, let me know where you're watching from. I see a lot of people getting connected, especially on uh, YouTube. Uh, Mark Wenson is watching with you. Maureen Berman is watching with you. Uh, bah, 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 bah. At least say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. It'll be nice to meet all of you guys. Um, and uh, let's see. Next. 
Uh -huh. Hot time signature. So here it is. I got to look at what I wrote. Okay, hot time signature. <laughs> now, to me, in my honest opinion, if we play, you know, a 4-4, four -four, a very simple time signature, okay? 4-4 four -four beat. We are not really, you know, counting when we're playing a simple beat, like 4-4, four -four, you know? I'm not there to go one, two, three, four, one, to me, when I play 4-4 four four or, you know, or any, any time signature, we're supposed to just play without thinking about, without thinking about counting, you know, because if we, <laughs> if we play music and start thinking about counting, you know, then we drive ourselves crazy, we go crazy. We can't focus on the music because your mind is thinking of one and two, so no. We just play. We feel the beat internally, you know, inside. And same thing supposed to be also, same thing supposed to be also when we play a time signature. You know, I'm gonna start with the, with, you know, with the, uh, the first, uh, a very simple one, let's say. Now, four, four, time signature. We play without thinking. Then we can go to five, four. We can go to seven. Go to nine. Okay, so we can go to eleven. so forth okay so now I'm gonna explain how I, f I came up with the idea uh, what actually not came up with the idea how do I how, how I approach let's put it in that way how I approach a time signature now going back to the example of playing 4-4 four -four, you know we're subdividing in eight notes and three Um, Jamison D. Lowe, hello from Utah. Utah, beautiful. Hello, Jamison. Nice to meet you here. If you have any questions, let me know. So here it is on eight notes. I'm subdividing eight notes. So now I'm thinking if I play seven, let's get slow, let's slow things down here. And explain it. If I play seven, uh, seven, eight, or seven, four times signature, I have seven, eight notes for seven, eight, right? So one and two and three and four, one and two, three and one. So I would count, you know at the beginning, and then we internalize this phrase. It's a musical phrase, which is uh, 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 
two, three, and the one, two, three, and the one, two, three, and the one, and two, and three, and the one. So you, instead of counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, which I'm against, you know, I don't approve that. <laughs> I, I don't really like the idea, you know, of numbers. But I like the idea to uh, think of a melody. Because at the end, see, the music, it's what is going to make us feel comfortable. It's going to make us smile, you know. So I will think of a melody, which is... You know, once you internalize this phrase, which is like one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, you know, then the challenge is, and, and, and you know, and the same thing goes, excuse me, let me go back a little bit. Once you internalize this, you know, then you don't need to count anymore, you just play. Or you can play on the Hyatt. You know, and it's a lot easier also to improvise, you know, counting, not counting, but just thinking of the melody. One, two, three, and the one, and the one. It gives you more space, you know, to uh, improvise. You know, if you're playing a drum solo, for example, you play a, a groove. And one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one. See, thinking of uh, the melody will give us more space because we are not counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, we are <coughs> we're counting quarter notes. One, two, three, and one. Okay, so it will give us more space um, and more freedom to fill those quarter notes. Wow. to play and improvise on those at time signature. And you can do the same thing in seven, in nine, in 11, in 13, okay? And so on and so forth. Um, let's see here. What's the next topic? We talk about how to practice groups, at time signature, okay? And by the way, the, um, the, 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 the figure, the rhythm of seven, eight. One, two, 
three, and the one, which those are two eight notes. One, two, three, and the one. One, two, two quarter notes, then it added eight notes, 16, you know, tied to another eight notes. So which is ta, 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 ta. So don't get that wrong because otherwise you're going to be playing seven and something instead of seven, four or seven, eight. Okay? So it's quarter notes, quarter notes, that eight notes, that eight notes, 16th, tight to another eight notes. That makes seven notes right there. Seven, eight notes right there. Now, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to help, like I said. Mike, Apple man. Hello, Mike. Thank you. Mike, where are you watching from? Where are you watching from, Mike? And the same thing, see, if you think of the melody, you can also practice rudiments in seven. Because, see, another thing, we always practice rudiments in four, in four, four, you know. One, two, three, about in seven. One, two, three, and one, two, three, and one. This practice double stroke crawling that way. I think it's a great idea because we always practice all the rudiments through double stroke crawl. We just go like this. But if we practice also the rudiments in all different time signature, okay, singing of a phrase like in nine, for example, one, two, three, four, and one, which the rhythm will be quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, that eight note. 16 tight to another eight notes. So, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, eight, eight. So, I'm gonna do that again. One, two, three, four, and one, two. And it's great because you can also switch hands after the ninth. One, Lower. One, two, three, four, and 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 one. You know, you can also think in that way, practicing rudiments, single stroke roll. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. You can apply two rudiments in one with the with the drag and rough. Like if you think in, you know, at times signature in seven or in nine, if you notice on the ninth, one, two, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. If you practice that in nine, automatically you're playing the cheese rudiments. You're applying all those, they call the cheese now. The cheese. Okay? But at the end, it all comes down to music. You know, 
and you can practice rudiments also thinking instead of thinking just time you know uh, four four time signature uh, even numbers you can also practice rudiments on a time signature in 11 for example one Paradiddle, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, four, five, and one, two, three, 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 four, five, and Five and one, two, three, four, five and one, two, singles. One, two, three, four, five and one, three, four, five and one, two, three, four, five and one, two, four, five and one, two, three, four, five and one, two, three, four, five and one. So you can practice all your rudiments also on a time signature, which that will help us to internalize those a time signature and give us more freedom you know and we will feel more comfortable if we have to play those time signature groove in 7 8 in 9 in 11 and it would be a lot easier i think in my honest opinion to improvise on you know on our instrument if we practice all the rudiments and our technique on using you know a time signature and not just 4 4 that's just my, you know, what it works for me. Um, now, any questions here? Unfortunately, I cannot read the uh, messages from YouTube because of my computer, my laptop is kind of far away from me in order to get a nice shot that you guys can see everything. But I will, you know, I will definitely check those questions afterwards and answer each and every one of you. And uh, let's see now. What's the next topic? So the technique, including uh, stem drum technique. Okay. Well, um, snare drum technique. I will, um, as I always go out, you know, and I'll, I've been, I've been posting videos about finger control, push and pull technique. Rest free stroke, finger control, French technique, match grab. How important it is to hold the drumstick, where and how, the pressure for the fulcrum. That's the fulcrum, right here. Fulcrum. There you go. So, I will start with the warm-up exercise, okay? Uh, four notes per each hand using just free stroke, just wrist, okay? That's for the beginners. Nice warm-up. Uh, four notes per each hand, which is this. And then you apply the fingers like I was just doing right now. You do it first with the free stroke, but you know, just rest without using your fingers. Then you apply the fingers. See? Okay. Same thing with the left hand. If you play traditional grip, here it is. When we play the drum, when we go down, you, you close your hand. But make sure you don't keep the stick on the, on the drum, otherwise you're gonna stop the sound and the uh, harmonics and the whole, the whole nine yards. I mean, you know, we have to always, always be able to let the drum breathe and leave the stick, you know, this space, this much space, okay? 
for the for for the drum head, which you know drum heads. By the way, I use Aquarium drum head, which I love them. Check them out. Great drum heads, I love them. Great sound. They make clear heads and coated and beautiful. Aquarium drum heads. Check it out. Uh, for those who are watching right now, I use Prologic, Pratic Spat. They're great. Istanbul Mohammed cymbals. Canopus drums, Longo snare, and Roto drums as a second snare. So check out those instruments. Those are wonderful. Um, do I forget anything else? I don't think so. No. Sticks, Los Gabos, Los Gabos drumsticks, great company from Canada. Check them out if you don't know them. So here I am. Once you apply the fingers, you might want to increase the tempo as you know as you feel comfortable. If you feel comfortable with it. See, those are all fingers. So, and so on and so forth. So you practice all the rudiments, you know, on a snare drum. It's, to me, it's, you know, I spend a lot of time on a snare drum, I separated the snare drum. I took the snare drum away from the drum set in my very young age, and you know, and spend a lot of time on 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 uh, just on the snare drum because, believe it or not, everything starts from here. If we have a good foundation on the snare drum, it's going to be a lot easier for us to, you know, to play the drums and sound better and achieve certain things, technical things on a drum set. That's what I believe. I see John Perry is watching from Australia as well. John, uh, there was a Vicky, uh, uh, Vicky Gratch from Australia as well. And I see John Perry is also from Australia. So John, are you still watching? Let me know, because if you're still watching, I'm going to show you that triplets that you were talking about, asking me in private. So now let's go back to the let's go move on with the next uh, step here. Uh, snare drum technique. I was talking about the warm up exercise. Rudiments to practice all the rudiments. Spend a lot of time on the snare drum. And again, it's very important to have a good, a very good drum technique and apply your fingers in the correct way. Practice with the metronome, which is very important. Practice very slow. Once you feel comfortable and you develop a good, you know, uh, uh, technique, you, you feel it. That your hands, you know, are moving without making any effort. You, f you will feel it in your bones that you're getting better. So you know exactly when to, you know, Yeah, you will know exactly, you will know exactly when to, you know, change tempo and play faster. But I would suggest, as I said, always to practice very slow. So, I want to, I would like to talk about finger control. To me, developing a great 
uh, if you want to call it great, but a good, you know, snare drum technique. Um, it's about be able to control and be in command of the rebounds of the sticks. So as you see, as you know, many of you out there already know, you play one note, but you can have three notes with it. You know, you play one note, same stroke, I can get two notes. See, because of the rebounds. Because automatically the stick will bounce back. You can get three notes. You can get four notes. Five, six, seven, eight, that was nine actually. Okay, you can get seven notes, six, five, four, and then three notes. Okay. So on and so forth. So now, with that being said, let's go back and see what it really, you know, takes to get to this level or maybe better. Okay, practice, be patient, a lot of practice, be patient, nobody's chasing you, take your time, sit down on the snare drum, just get the snare drum away from the drum set, sit down and start really working on up and down stroke. Which this movement, this motion right here, will always stay with you. Always, okay? Even when we play fast. I can feel it in my bones, I still, I still, excuse me, I still have this, you know, freedom, and I still feel like my happy downstroke, which is started from the shoulder, all the way down to the heart, it's always there. So the, the slower we play, the slower we play, the, you know, you can see this motion, you know, a big motion, which is. Hold on a second, let me show you. Hear this. Now, as fast as I play, if I, you know, increase the tempo, you will see this motion getting smaller and smaller. Check it out, but, but, but it's still there though. So the faster I play, this motion gets smaller and smaller. I don't know if that makes sense. So, so with a nice coordination, because it's all coordinated, and be able to control the rebounds of the sticks. So there are involved, many things involved into this. Fingers. which I will set up a metronome and play those 16 notes, okay? Playing one note at this tempo. One, two, three. This must be 80 or something. Four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, 
Just using fingers and a little slight, you know, see, uh, as fast as we play, we don't really move the, the, the rest all the way up and down like this. We just need to get used to this little vibration and apply and sync together fingers and wrist. And so on and so forth. Those are all fingers, okay? Now, once we get a good finger control, Once we get a nice finger control, and we practice all the rudiments, you apply this technique to anything we play. You know, singles, paradiddle, and we'll come automatically. Okay? I don't know if I make sense, but uh, if, you get, if, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Now. Since Perry is not really there, actually, Perry is, was watching, is watching. Um, let's see. We'll, um, <laughs> Nastor Damian Ferreira Alves is watching with you. Oh. So, again. Finger control, then we can work on, you know, different rudiments. Which again, I would suggest any rudiments to practice slow and increase the tempo as you feel you are getting better. Okay? Now, should I talk about push and pull technique, mold technique? Let's see. I'm going to give you quick tips on the molder technique first. Molder technique is no other than play multiple notes, you know, with one stroke. In this case, three. Now the motion for the Mulder technique is playing a, a, you know, the first stroke with an accent, and then let let the stick bounce for the next two notes. You know, and again I would suggest page seventy three from Master Studies by Joe Morello. The first line; those are all eight notes, which this motion playing an accent on every first, second, third, and fourth beat. Two, three, four, one, two. Okay, this motion will help you to develop a good Mulder technique because this can become this. Watch, same motion, more notes. Okay? And same thing with the right hand. Okay? So that's what it is. Again, let's move on. Now, since I see no, no questions here, Start at 90 BPM. Okay, good. That's very good. Now, um, push and pull technique. It's a different technique than Mulder. And it's about 
throw the stick, you throw it, and then catch it. I'm going to exaggerate and show you this motion. Throw it, catch it. Okay. See? That's what it is. Push, pull. You pushing the stick, then you pull it, pull it back up. So And same thing with the left hand. So on and so forth. So I would suggest always to practice those technique at a very slow tempo. And remember, the key is, don't rush. Don't worry about getting it right away, because it's not gonna it's not gonna happen overnight. You will never get it in a week. It takes long time to achieve certain motions, certain techniques. Okay, so but if you are patient and you you have the willpower, the love, and the passion for your instrument. All this, you can do it much, you can do it. There is no doubts, you know, you're not going to fail. You will achieve your goal, but you need three things. The love and the passion and the patience. First, a group, I'm grouping, <laughs> it's group. Patience. You have to make the sacrifice of practicing seriously with a great teacher, take regular lessons. Three, the time that you spend on the instrument. You know, if I spend, see, it's, it's like, if I only practice 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and then I do other things, and then I get distracted, you were never gonna achieve a, you know, a good technique. You will never be in command. It will take you a long time. And not only, you, it's going to be a lot diffi more difficult to, to, um, to, uh, to achieve certain things. It's, about, it's really about how hard you work on the instrument and how much time you really spend on this instrument. But this goes for any instrument out there. It can be for piano, for trumpet, for saxophone, guitar, bass, love, passion, consistency so thank you very much for watching and i hope this video was helpful to uh, many of you guys out there uh, make sure you guys click the like button on my fan page facebook uh, fan page pepe marola fan page uh, check out my youtube channel at pepe marola uh, subscribe click like there's many videos there for you to watch and you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening or day if you're watching this video tomorrow. I keep drumming because music is life. Okay? Pepe Merola here. And check out my website at www.pepemerola.com to get more info about my uh, merchandise. CDs, online music lessons. There's, you know, old concerts, videos, instructional videos. There's also a new page, Pepe Merola in France, where I got, you know, some videos there, you know, hosting and uh, actually uh, invited some of the best drummers in the world and, you know, dear friend of mine. So check it out. Check it out. Pepemerola.com. That's my webpage. Check out Pepemerola and Friends. There's all the information about online drum lessons there. Uh, and also inbox me if you have any questions. Thank you for watching. You have a wonderful, wonderful